Hey everyone, Joe joining you again for an image edit and we're going to do this one in a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop. As powerful as Lightroom has gotten, there's still a couple things that I think Photoshop makes easier or does a little bit better and this image is going to do it. Now this is a very subtle kind of image. This is out near Monument Valley. Uh, in on the Utah Arizona border and yeah, there's nothing going on, but that's the whole point We just have this one road kind of leading off uh, and all we have is a nice cloudscape. So that's great uh, it, It's very subtle and I think we can do something with this. So let's get started first of all uh, Exposure wise uh, everything looks fine In fact, I think I might actually bring it up just a smidge to brighten it up something like that because I'm going to come down to presence and add some stuff Actually, shadows, highlights, all this stuff, I think it all looks fine. Maybe a little contrast. Let's see. Yeah, a little contrast is good, too. We'll add that because we're going to do some stuff in Photoshop to bring that up. Uh, texture. Let's add a bunch of texture, which is a, a fine detail sharpening. Clarity will do about half of that. And dehaze. Yeah, let's add a, little, add a little bit of dehaze as well. All right, so just that quickly, we've gone from there to there. The image has a lot more life to it. As far as vibrance and saturation, again, vibrance is going to uh, add more saturation to cooler and desaturated colors, so we'll add something to the blue. Let's just do a little bit. We'll add about 10 points to the blue. Love it. And then saturation, well, the ground's a little flat now, too, so let's add about 10 points for that. And again, that quickly, we've gone from there to there. You could think, well, I'm done. Well, you're not done. <laughs> well, first of all, cropping doesn't need to be cropped. Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's just go to the cropping tool. There's just way too much up here with nothing going on. Uh, if you wanted to stick to a standard frame size, we can click on original and pick something. Oh, four by six is actually what our cameras do. So that's not going to help. Eight by 10 is going to be all wrong for this. That makes it even worse. So I'm thinking something, oh, maybe like a two to one panorama. And I don't have that. So let's go ahead and add that as a custom aspect ratio two to one okay and it might be a little too skinny but let's see uh actually i kind of like it now as we do this you can also see there's a there's kind of a dip off to the left now in reality that might have been how the ground is here but it can throw off a viewer so i'm going to fix that let's just straighten that out a little bit right here just enough to take away the question and again looking pretty good considering this is what we started with vignette yes it needs a little vignette but before we do that here's where photoshop comes in we've got some colors that are a little bit suspect so what we're going to do is send this thing into photoshop because i'm going to show you a way to fix oh by the way speaking of fixing there's something hiding right there some kind of i don't know litter so let's just click on that and get rid of it. Good, that's gone. Okay. Also, this rock right here, you know what? I hate to say it. It's a little bit of a visual distraction. Sorry, rock, but you got to go. There we go. Now let's send this into Photoshop. Photo, edit in Photoshop or Command or Control E. All right, so here's our image in Photoshop. And for some reason in Photoshop, with it all by itself, the color does look a little bit off. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a color balance adjustment. Come down here, the bottom of the layers menu. This is where the adjustments are, and we're going to do color balance. And I'm just going to drag this out into here, and I'm just going to start dragging back and forth. And I'm looking at the sky right now. So let's go left and right. Yeah, the sky is a little pink, so let's take it a little bit to cyan. And I'm going to do this quickly. I'm just going to drag back and forth. One of them is going to look better than the other and just go to the one that looks a little better. By the way, if neither of them look good when you move it, then that means leave it alone. I think about right there, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Very little bit of blue. All right, let's go to highlights and do the same thing. Yep, it needs a little more blue, or cyan rather. And magenta, yeah, it needs magenta. Magenta brings in that warmth again to the sky. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, maybe a little bit of blue. Just subtle there. And then lastly, shadows. You wouldn't think there's shadows in the sky. There are. So let's see. Red, blue, cyan, red, cyan, red. Actually, a little bit of red. Very little bit. Cyan. All right. Now we move on. Magenta, green, magenta, green, magenta, green. Maybe a very little bit of magenta. 
And lastly, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Actually, you know what? It needs a little yellow, which is a little bit unusual. All right, so let's close that. And now if we turn this on and off with the eyeball over here, you can see what we've done. And the sky looks a lot better. I'm not thrilled with the foreground, however. I'm not sure, I don't like the color that it's gone, as great as the sky looks. So how do we fix that? Well, click on the background, and we're going to select the sky. So select sky, just like we would do in Lightroom. And I actually don't want the sky. I want everything but the sky. So the, the keyboard shortcut to do this in Photoshop is Command-Shift-I, which is invert, or inverse, rather. And there we have just the foreground selected. And I'm going to click on the mask in the color balance. I've got black in the foreground. And all I do is hit Alt-Delete, and it masks out the foreground. So you can see now when we have the color change, it's only happening to the sky. Now we need to deal with the foreground. So we're going to do another color balance just for the foreground. So how do we do just the foreground? Well, I'm going to copy and invert the mask we used for the first one. So if you hold down the Alt key and drag the mask in, it will copy it over to the new adjustment layer. However, now we want to use Command I, which is invert, which gives me just the opposite. So now I can make adjustments, double click on the thing here, and now I can make adjustments and you see it only affects the bottom. Okay, so let's do that same thing. Let's start dragging the sliders back and forth. A little bit of cyan. Yeah, I need some cyan. It was a little too red. All right, we'll do the same thing and just kind of go back and forth and try to remember in your mind's eye when you were here what to do to make it look the way it looked to you. Okay, it actually needs a little bit of blue. So now let's go to highlights. We're going to do the same thing we did for the sky. Yeah, it needs cyan again. And it needs magenta. All right, that's starting to look the way I remember it. Blue, yellow, yeah, very little bit of yellow. And lastly, with the shadows, red, cyan, yeah, it needs cyan. And again, same thing here. Oh, now we need, yeah, cyan and magenta were lacking in this. And then lastly, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. You know, I think that one is probably about fine. And here we can do, now watch this. Let's turn this one on and off and look at the difference between what we started with. Now, when we've done this, it's kind of overall darkened the entire image a little bit, easily fixed. Come down to adjustment layers again. We're going to use brightness contrast. We're going to bring up the brightness a little bit to add a little bit of bright pop to it. All right, now as I'm looking at it, let's see, what other colors do I want to adjust? I think I want to take a closer look again at the foreground. Let's see what we've got here one more time. As I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking, you know, I think I want it a little bit warmer. Remember this, some of this stuff is somewhat subjective. All right, that was just a fine tune for that one. Let's see. That one was okay. I think it just needed the mid-tone cyan red balance adjusted a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks, actually, you know what? I'm liking it a little redder as I look at it now. Okay, so again, we can turn all of these off temporarily. We started with that, and we ended up there. See, the image just has a little bit more pop to it. So I'm going to save this, and that will send that back into Lightroom. And then we can go into Lightroom and, and see if we want to do any last-minute kind of adjustments. So let's tab over to Lightroom. All right, here's our image in Lightroom. Do I want to make any other changes? Yeah, actually I do. I want to take a look at the color overall color balance and see if we go a little bit warmer. No, the temperature is fine. Let's check the tint. And maybe a slight bit of green. And I think I want a little more saturation overall. There we go. One last thing I want to do here. We've got the road here. I want to highlight this a little bit more to create some visual interest for the viewer that there's something leading you off to the horizon here. So we're going to use a brush. So let's come up to the masking panel, choose brush or again, the K key. We've got our brush. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I do have auto mask on because I don't want it to hit the sky. And I'm just going to draw inside this path here, which is the road. And we're going to bring up the exposure just a little bit to separate it out. And we could even 
further help that by changing the color a little bit so we can make it a little bit more let's see what does it need a little bit more yellow and maybe a little green sounds like an odd thing to do but it's not and then lastly let's add some dehaze to this which will add some detail to it actually you know what as i do this i want to bring the saturation down on that all right just a subtle little bit of lightening there and it doesn't even look like anything was done but if we go up to the masking panel we can hide it and there's the before and after see it's just kind of a subliminal all right lastly last thing let's go to our effects and let's add a vignette i think this needs a vignette i'll do my standard minus 12 and I'm liking it. So when we go to full screen, there's the raw file that we started with. Interesting composition, had some potential, and we just took that and turned it into that, which really now is a striking uh, landscape that is very kind of subliminal, but really something very pleasing about it. Just with some Lightroom and Photoshop stuff, but it's visualizing what you want the image to do when you take it that's going to allow you to do this. So that was some cool stuff in both Lightroom and in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.